Have you seen it yet? Have you seen it yet? I know you know what I'm talking about. I also can't see anything in this. It's so hot in this. I've seen it. And if you can't tell by now, I'm talking about Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Oh my God. <laughs> It's really hot in here. I'm not gonna wear that anymore. As you may be able to tell, I have a new favorite movie and it's called Spider-Man uh, Across the Spider-Verse. This is a spoiler-free video. If you haven't seen it, go see it. It is fantastic. First movie changed the animation industry forever and the second one has also changed the animation world forever. And while I was watching it, I was thinking, man, this is why. I make movies. This is why I wanna be in movie making because you can make such beautiful moving artwork and it's just so dope. So this is my application to get hired by Sony to, to work on Spider-Verse. <laughs> Disney, if you're watching this, I'm, I'm absolutely kidding. But Sony, if you're watching? So as obsessions go, I think about it all the time. I can't stop thinking about it. I even bought this stupid action figure in an absolute haze. I have never bought a toy in my adult life, but something within me has deeply changed. So today I'm drawing my spider Sona. It's who I would be if I was in the Spider-Verse universe. And no, it is not who I am right now. It's who I want to be. So let's start drawing. So my first instinct, I know I want to draw just a really loose, absolutely rough sketch of what I think maybe my costume can kind of look like. I like a, a big top silhouette compared to, you know, not, not much going on in the legs. So I have a big chunky upper area and I'm talking cool hoodie. And I don't want to make it like everybody else's hoodie, like a spider Gwen hoodie. That hoodie's been done, been there, done that. But I do like a thick collar. So that's what I kind of went through for. And like with a one sleeve thing going on, maybe like a fanny pack across your chest, you know what they go. So the first thing I'm drawn to doing is making a portrait style of the Spider-Verse universe. And there's some really cool rendered portraits. So I'm looking at Jake Penyon's gorgeous painting of Hobes, Hobie, Hobby, Hobie, it's Hobie, to kind of emulate that Spider-Verse style. So I look at his gorgeous painting to kind of see how I can make it in my my own face. And I'm also looking at Jinx from Arcane because there's a gorgeous like painterly style when it comes to the Arcane characters. And I'm also looking at Alberto Mielgo's rendering of the first movie characters. So this painting of Spider Gwen has some really cool shadows. So I'm really trying to incorporate all the things that I'm learning from these three artists. And you know, I'm not going into it really thinking that it's gonna turn out like anything because when I have high expectations, then the painting doesn't turn out usually. And especially because this is such a rough technique that Jake kind of emulated, I'm kind of trying to get the inks to work in my favor and kind of allowing, you know, mistakes a lot of graphic shapes rather than when I was doing my portrait paintings a couple of videos ago. I was really focusing on like blending and stuff like that, but here I can focus on some cool textures and some halftone and some black sketches and cross hatching and stuff like that. I have this stupid smirk on my face because I thought that would. <laughs> I thought that would work within the Spider-Verse universe. I see now that it does look a little dumb, but that's not what we're here to talk about. I changed the eyebrows a little bit. And also this is like my most successful painting, self-portrait of myself I think I've ever done. And I did not even look at reference of my face. I just know what I look like. I've been in this body for 27 years now. So I am just raw dogging this portrait of myself hoping that it'll look like me. Usually I don't really paint myself quite well. I have this little bump on my nose right here, a little crooked nose, and it's always been my least favorite part about myself, but you know, I, I thought that this way of portraying it would be pretty neat. Usually from the front angle, it doesn't really look like much. It's hard to kind of emulate, I feel like, but with this little crookedness of the nose with kind of a slender bridge, I feel like it is both feminine, beautiful, and also kind of has that unique feature of my nose. So I thought that was a really cool breakthrough for myself, not only um, my painting skills, my self-portrait skills, but also my ego. So that was nice. And I also added my um, little dimple in my chin. That's also something that I don't like about myself. And I threw it in. Once you paint yourself in a beautiful way, then you're gonna love your features. So I think this was a little exercise in self-love. Also, I drew my hair a little bit more of a shag than I have. I also drew it with orange ends, cause trust me, listen to me. I used this painting of myself as a reference for the haircut that I wanted and 
I wanted a shag, I wanted orange ends, and then I came out of the hairdresser looking like this. Not my finest moment, very sad time in my life. This is like my, what I want out of my hair. Back to the painting. So I'm working on some, like some highlights around like the fabrics and, and clothing and stuff like that, really looking at the sketchiness of the reference I'm using. Just doing final touches. I'm having a, a light source from screen right to be kind of pinkish and then a bounce light on the left to be a little bit bluish because there's a lot of those um, pink and blue like uh, RGB split looks in the film. So that's kind of what I'm focusing on with a little bit of scribbles on the end. What I wish I did a little bit more was kept a lot more black lines. I think that would have helped um, create like create the style that we're looking for like around the hair if I really focused on that but it's finished and I think it's really cool I'll show you it at the end so now I'm working on making my main character so now I have the rendered portrait of the character what does the costume look like so I have this really loose sketch that I'm working off of so I'm drawing my character in a standing three-quarter front pose and the goal of this is to make it look like these rendered characters in this style of how the first movie had it where you know you just have the turnaround in the style of the film which is very unique to spider-verse because usually the turnarounds um, don't look anything like the final film because the styles are a lot more you know rendered 3d but because we're really aiming for for this really cool comic book style. I'm, I'm trying to give it all what I got. And I'm also trying to keep in a lot of blacks and sketchy lines of my initial sketch. I don't care enough to make it look perfect. And second of all, I think that it has a lot of fun, sketchy looseness that I think that the film emulates. Before you say anything, I know my portrait, the head is long hot dog style, but the head in this part is short and round hamburger style. How can a hot dog fit into a hamburger? It's a cartoon. So that's where we are with that. <laughs> so I'm working on the orange ends of the hair. I'm gonna have her hair stick out of her mask, just like I had in the beginning with this mask, because she also couldn't find the end of the morph suit that goes over the whole head. So we all have to make do with what we have. Just finishing up with some highlights, having a pink rim light on the le screen left and on the right, having a little bit of a yellow bounce light. So now that my two characters are done, now it's time to make a couple of quick poses, just some fast ones. I didn't really focus on this too hard. I had to go to the dentist halfway through, only for me to be very disappointed in that decision. So when I came back from the dentist, I sketched out some of these poses and obviously perspective is whack. I don't know what spiders do. And I also tried experimenting with a new brush, which is never a good idea when you're trying to make something look nice. So I ended up redoing a few of these poses or, you know, the lining of these poses because it do be hard to be working with a new brush. But in the end, once you color, add a glitch effect, anything could look nice. My spider Sona would be very good at avoiding crime fighting. I think she would be running and swinging. She'd mostly be perching, I think. I also am scared. I'm very scared of conflict. So I don't think um, a spider job is the job for me. And my spider Sona's name would be the Spider Slav. The, spy the Slavic spider. Let me go to ChatGPT and see what they can come up with. Arachnidov. Webinov. Silkovsky. <laughs> Tarantulov. <laughs> Vinomkov. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> so this is my spider sauna. We got a cool portrait in the style of the spider verse. I think I would be awesome addition to the spider universe. Um, Sony, please hire me to be a spider or at least draw them spiders. I really like the costume. I really like the colors. You know, it's not too vibrant of primary colors, even though it is primary colors, but it doesn't seem childish. It seems pretty edgy. And I love a good edginess to my characters. And I think the poses kind of show what she can do, what I can do, what, she, what we can do swinging around and stuff. Thanks for watching, watch the movie, and let me know what you think of the movie, and let me know what you think of my spider Sona. And send this video to Sony Animation CEO. Bye!